Welcome inside episode 548 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan in the heart of our nation's capital in Ottawa, Ontario, alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains. And as you can probably tell from my voice, it's been a wild week in Ottawa, but the Senators finished it off with a 4 nothing loss to Florida in their final home game of the regular season. Yeah, tough showing for fan appreciation night, Ross. But they did go out there and uh, shake hands with fans after, so you got to respect that. And speaking of Sens players, we got to interview Lassie Thompson, and we talked to him about the upcoming playoffs for the Belleville Senators. He's fired up and he's confident about that, so stay tuned for a past, present, and future of what Lassie Thompson is all about. All that plus, since it's the final day of the season, a game day we should mention as well for the Ottawa Senators in Philadelphia. We're going to do one final tank watch before the odds are set. This is the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen on this Friday, April 29th. And Pilsy, they were on such a good run. They'd won four straight. What happened last night for the Ottawa Senators to fall flat on their face? Well, Ross, even though the President Trophy winning team, they've now clinched that title, even though they sat half their roster, it's still a damn good team. I mean, you just got to tip your cap to the amount of depth that that team has and even their secondary scoring guys like uh, Verhage, Duclair or not Duclair, sorry, but uh, um, Reinhardt. That Mammon kid had an unbelievable couple rushes too. They're, they're a deep squad and we're, we're hopping on the bandwagon, aren't we for the cats? Oh yeah. Cats all the way. You know, I'm a cat guy, Ross. So definitely that's where I'm going with that. (laughs) And I want to see Claude Giroux get a cup here. So let's go. I'm I'm between the uh, Panthers and the Rangers. Are my two East teams? Shout out Bet Online. I've been riding with the Rangers since before the deadline on a future for Eastern Conference and Stanley Cup champion. So we got some sends abroad in the mix. Mika Zibanejad with the Rangers. Yep. We've got Anthony Duclair down in South Florida. So you know that that is what you're going to get on Locked On Senators. There's a lot of sends abroad talk, a lot of draft lottery talk up till May 10th, and. Of course, we got our draft profile starting. We're going to have to get a top 60, I think. Two rounds is good enough, right? Yeah. We'll La- cap- Last year, they had three picks. They took one guy that we had. And the guy that we had, if we didn't do two rounds, we wouldn't have got the guy at 10th overall. I was going to say, Ross, yeah, let's let's go to at least 60. That way, the player the Sens pick at 7th overall, at, at ranked 55th overall, will be able to cover. Five-star guy, though. Five-star guy. Five-star guy. All right, let's quickly finish up on last night's game because there wasn't a whole lot to get into, at least that we want to get into. But I think the Florida is, is such a great example. Like, they had their high draft picks. They had their rebuild. But then they made such shrewd trades, bringing in guys that contributed last night. Sam Reinhart, they gave up a lot to get him. A yep. first and, I mean, they drafted Devin Le- Levi in the in the seventh round, but he's turned into a great prospect. So they made a substantial trade to get Reinhardt well kids got 33 goals after scoring the opener in last night's game and then Sam Bennett they yeah. traded from Calgary he's got 28 goals everyone was talking about how he's such a bust I don't think so anymore now he's looking like he's doing well offensively and Carter Verhage I want to say they got him off of waivers if not they didn't give up much from from Tampa to get him and he scored twice he's got 24 goals so they are just an absolutely stacked team but For Ottawa, I would have liked to have seen a little more emotion, especially in the third period. Austin Watson, to me, was the only guy who really brought it last night through uh, Patrick Hornquist off the goalie when he was touching Gustafson. He was really the only guy, to me, that brought like that punch that they needed against the Cats. Yeah, I would agree. Austin Watson was definitely the uh, the Sen Central standout of the game. I thought Formy had a good game, too. He had a couple good rushes and some good chances, but... Other than that, not a whole lot to like here. And uh, I really didn't like Eric Brandstrom's game, Ross. He had a couple bad giveaways, a couple weak plays on the puck. And that's that's not what you want to show at, in your final couple games here. So hopefully he can pick things up uh, tonight up against the Flyers. But I thought he was one of their worst players out there. Tough one for Branny. Only 
Hamannick and Shabbat were even on the night. Every other defenseman dashed too. Could tonight be the final time we see Nikita Zaitsev play for the Ottawa Senators? <laughs> Let's hope so. Please say a prayer. Same with Chris Tierney. I'm wearing my, my party shirt in honor of that. Maybe well, Chris there... Tierney's as good as gone. That's at least nice to know. But yes. Zaitsev, we'll see how that goes. Just an awful game all around for the Ottawa Senators. So take that for what you will. The best part, we always like to say this. And we've said it, what, 17 back-to-backs when they when they take a dump in the first half? Well, the best part about that game is that they get to play again less than 24 hours later, and they're playing against another shit team, the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, the, the Flyers, I mean, we talked about it on uh, yesterday's show. How about 13-game losing streaks being a normal thing around there? Like, that is absolutely mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah, like, that is crazy to think of. So, hopefully, they can uh, they can have a better showing. I know it's on the road. It's unfortunate. I, it would have been nice to have that flip day. Eh? The boys get to go to Florida for a game, get spanked on the road. Like, there's, <laughs> there's the old saying, if you're going to stink, stink on the road, right? Yeah. You don't want to do it in front of the fans for fan appreciation night. Like zero <laughs> goals. <laughs> No. Or I should do this zero goals, so that's not great. And it would have been nice to have the the grounded flyers come into town for that night. But whatever, it is the way it is. And I I thought Gustafson actually made a couple decent saves. All of the goals were results of poor turnovers by the Sens in their own zone or lackadaisical efforts with the puck in the neutral zone that the Panthers were able to jump on. So I, I'm not blaming Philip Gustafson at all for this one. Um, it, it's a tough way for him to end his season. His NHL season? His NHL season, yes, correct. Because he'll be in goal on Saturday for Belleville. We're going to be all over Belleville as well. As the NHL season winds down, there are no off days in Sensland. There really aren't. So uh, we are going to touch on the um, the interview with Lassie Thompson. we got to get to first. Then we'll do a tank watch because the Philadelphia Flyers are pretty much locked into that four spot when we get to the tankathon. But we have over 24 minutes with Lassie Thompson. We have pretty much a minute for each minute he played in his NHL debut as Lassie Thompson played more than any other Sens defenseman in their first NHL game. He talks about playing with Thomas Shabbat. He talks about how close this team is in Belleville, how tight-knit they are. And how about his answer to my my dumb question where I said, would you rather the buy in the play-in but start on the road or start at home but have the play-in series he didn't go the direction i thought well lassie's hungry for playoff games we mentioned it he's only played four playoff games in his hockey career four that's in it his life yeah in his entire life so he, he he's ready for playoff hockey no spoilers but he's ready well let's get to that interview and on the way there we'll drive over to it with a quick word from our friends at built bar summer is coming Woo. and with summer you're going to need to grab food to keep you well-nourished on hot, sunny days. Where better to go than a back of Bilt Bars for the perfect snack to take with you on family vacations? Throw them in your bag, in your kids' backpacks. Not only will they taste delicious, but the packaging is so cool, your kids are going to absolutely dig that at camp. The best part about Bilt Bars is they're healthy and delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Bilt Bar, you can have both. It's that easy. All you have to do is go to built.com and order them right now. All built bars and puffs are covered in 100% chocolate. And that means with built bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. Go. We always offer the mixed box. So you can try all the different flavors. Go to built.com and get all your favorite flavors, whether it's banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate. There are so many to choose from. They're all delicious with new flavors coming out all the time. They're always working. So check them out at built. Dot com. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your next order of Built Bars. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, here's our interview with Senators' first round pick from 2019. It's Lassie Thompson. All right, we now welcome on a very, very special guest to the Locked On Senators podcast. He was the 19th overall selection in the 2019 NHL draft. He's been the captain for Team Finland at the World Juniors, and now in his second season in North America, helped lead Belleville to their first playoff appearance. Lassie Thompson, welcome to Locked On Senators. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm, I'm doing great today. 
You guys just made the playoffs last Saturday in Toronto. Did you guys have some celebratory drinks after, you know, get out to town? I saw you guys are getting quite the Scandinavian crew there. I know you came over with Roby and now Victor Lodine joining you. How'd you guys celebrate the big win? Well, uh, not too much. I, we had a couple beers in the bus and just try to enjoy those couple day, days off after that big win for us. So that's one way to clinch, right? Because the other game went your way. So you'd already gotten in, but then still get the victory in Toronto. That's huge. And that might be a, an opponent in the postseason. Are you getting tired? Was it the same, I should say, in Finland, where you're playing the same teams over and over? Because every time I look, you guys are playing Laval or Toronto, it seems. Yeah, it's kind of tough, but I get used to it last year because we... Even well, last. Yeah, basically we have just four teams what we play against last year so you get a lot of used to it and I don't even remember how many times we play against Laval and Toronto last year so yeah it was it was a that. lot that's yeah, for sure yeah, it was a lot yeah now we like to when we have players on the show last we like to go all the way back to when you were a kid and when you started playing hockey so when did you realize that uh, you were going to fall in love with this game uh it's a long time ago. I feel when I was starting school, when I was seven years, I, all my buddies play hockey. So I just run into my parents and ask, like, can I play hockey? Can I try that? So that's the way how I start my hockey career. And were you always a defenseman or did you start out playing forward? Uh, yeah, first point, I, well, a couple first years, there's not like, Different man or forward, so it was all all around. But when I was a little bit older, I like to play forward. I like to watch like players in the NHL, like Ovechkin and guys like that who shoot the puck and score a lot of goals. And I like to be forward. But then I don't remember what year was it. Probably like when I was eleven, twelve. I decided to go D man, and I like it. And I think that's good for me. Yeah, I think it worked out all right so far. <laughs> First round pick in the NHL, I'd yep. say so. Um, now, before you came over to North America the first time when you played in Kelowna, you were coming up through the Eel system and ultimately you ended up going back there. But I'm curious about the story of what made you decide to come over to North America for your draft year. Was it as simple as wanting to get more exposure to NHL scouts? Uh, well, I didn't think that way. I was just... I want to get more experience and grow up a little bit, get out from my hometown and like doesn't have to be with my parents all the time. And I think there was a lot of older players who play here from Finland. So I think, yeah, I want to try that and see what happens. And I was feeling when I make that cho choice, if I don't go now, I'm going to be mad. Like when I'm older, I didn't go. Yeah, and so, last, last year, I'm a big fan of Kelowna, BC. I love going out there. So I'm stoked to finally get to talk to a Kelowna prospect. <laughs> what was your experience like there? And um, you were with head coach Adam Foote, right, in your no, time there? Even better, Pilsy. Jason Smith was your coach, wasn't he? Yeah, Jason Smith was former our coach. Former Sens, Sens legend, Jason Smith. He played it one yeah. of his last years of his career there. But you were an offensive-minded defenseman, and he's a pretty stay-at-home guy. How did that yeah, relationship they, go? Yeah, they are pretty tough, you know. So, <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I feel they both goals was good for me, and they teach a lot of things for me so I get my defensive game better. And I think that was huge for me. Oh, no doubt. Well, it earned you a reputation with the Tom Bomb, we like to call it. Oh. 17 goals that year. You laugh, but that's a pretty sweet nickname, I got to say. Yeah, it's kind of sweet nickname. I like it. <laughs> that's all. We take credit for the Great Dane, too. I know that's getting around the dressing room for, for Mad. So we've got a few Shark Love as well. We like to have some fun, get the guys some nicknames. Who's the biggest character on your team in Belleville? Ah, uh, that's a tough one. Uh I don't know. I actually, I don't know. There's a lot of, a lot of funny guys. And like, I think we get the great groove in Bellevue right now. And I feel there's nobody who is just like by himself, like everybody's in the team and you can talk to everybody. And we have a lot of fun 
like every road trip it's a lot of fun yeah, no oh, doubt. Yeah. I got to call the two games when you guys in uh, in Manitoba, and I know you you were injured in the first game. But how about that shootout? Have you ever seen somebody win a shootout by breaking a stick on the same goal? No, no, actually not. That's that's <laughs> kind of crazy goal, but good for us. And I think more funny was that Sally after the goal, but it's just holding it up, eh? Oh, that's awesome, man. You can tell how tight knit you guys are for sure. But I want to get back. Actually, we'll, we'll touch on Belleville in a little bit. But when you when you say you came over to, to North America to live on your own, how much went into the decision to go back to Finland afterwards? Because that was before. It's not like the pandemic brought you home. You started the season there um, after you were drafted. Was that you talking with the senators, with your agent, or was that more of a personal decision? Well, uh, pretty much everything I talked to. I talked to with Sens, I talked to my agent, and I talked to my parents, pretty much everybody, what they think. And I think that was the, well, of course, it was my call, what I want to do. But everybody told me, like, they're going to support me, whatever I want to do. And I feel that's the best way to get better, to play with men's and get experience there than play juniors one more year. and. I'm pretty happy I do that. Yeah, it was a good path for you. That's for sure. And speaking of your path to the NHL, what was your draft day experience like? I always like hearing about guys, um, especially in the first round when you're you're waiting for your name to be called. Did you have a feeling the Ottawa Senators were going to select you? Like, had you talked to them a bunch? Uh, not actually, not much. So I was I was really surprised when they drafted me because I had no idea they're gonna they're gonna pick me. But yeah, it's, it was it was nice to hear my name, and there's fun fun story. Uh, I was sitting with my agent and with my parents, and I was going to the bathroom. It was around like after ten pick, and my agent asked my dad like, "Where he's going? Like he can't go anywhere right now." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so he probably knows something, but we had no clue. The second Finn in that draft, Capo Caco went second overall. And then are you buddies with Ville Hanola as well? A little bragging rights there. He's the exact next pick. Yeah, yeah. We are good buddies. We play in national team together. And I remember after he get picked and uh, behind the, like, whenever he get picked, I remember we get a little handshake after that. So, oh yeah, hundred percent. It was a nice moment. It was well, nice moment. Not only that, but you guys continued that nice moment into the World Juniors the next year. There was some sense prospect on prospect crime, though. I don't know if you talked to Shane Pinto about this, but you guys were going at it pretty good there. <laughs> Do you know the play I'm talking about? Yeah, I remember the play. <laughs> I think somebody made a funny clip when I lose my mouth cord, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, good. I remember that. Had you guys met before at development camp? Because he would have been the second pick, or even at the draft, he was the second pick in that same draft. Yeah, actually, we was our first dev camp. We was for roommates, so <laughs> okay, even that's better. even better. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, hey, well, that's one way to to squash the the disagreements is just put you together and uh, you got to sort it out. So that's good. And I want to ask more about that tournament because you were the captain for Team Finland. What was it like getting to wear a C uh, for your home country team? That must have been awesome. Yeah, of course, that was awesome. I didn't wait that I'm going to wear the C for the tournament, but I think that was a big honor for me. And, of course, to get feeling like coach trusts you and – Everybody knows like you can be the leader at the team. So I think that was good for me. And then so offensively, even when you came back and you said it was going to be an adjustment playing against men, you still put up seven goals and, and had 13 points. But the next year it was a little bit tougher. And it felt like when we were watching the depth chart that they weren't playing you as much as we thought they should have been. What were the challenges like that that COVID shortened year and everything's kind of weird there before you made the move to come over to North America? Yeah, of course, it, it's tough season. Uh, I feel first season was great. Like I get play a lot and like I get my game way better than it was year before. But the next year, I feel everybody knows I'm going to leave some point. Like AHL is going to start some point. So they probably doesn't want to play me that much. 
and try to make the team who is playing their whole year. So I get it. And uh, of course, like most important thing was just get games and like practice with the team. So be be good shape when uh, camp starts. So. Oh, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And we have to ask because everyone who watched uh, or followed Eels during the lockout and hand up, I mean, you were there, Roby was there, right? So we're interested. The old Irish pub, and it came up every time there was a goal scored. What's what's the story there? Is it just a sponsor? Did they take take good care of you guys? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I think that's a, just Bob and Tambre where who is sponsored sponsoring uh illness so for sure we just had a lot of fun with that because it happened so often and, and roby was lighting it up too so that was good to see now when you came over to north america you had a bit of a relationship with some of the guys i, I always feel for the 2020 draft picks because there was no development camp at least you kind of knew the organization a little bit what was it like coming in and then you're playing at the nhl arena in front of no fans yeah of course it it was tough and but I get a little bit used to that because we didn't have a lot of fans in Finland because of COVID. But yeah, it's 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 totally different, and I think that's kind of good experience for everybody. It was like teaching season for young guys, try to get into AHL and NHL, and I think that was a good thing. I was I was doing still that one dev camp right after my draft year. So I a little bit know everybody. And of course, they call me like they call me a lot. We had like a lot of Zoom meetings and stuff. So I was pretty confident when I got here. And uh, actually, I'm going to ask that later. I want to ask about your first NHL game because it was earlier this year. You actually played the most minutes by a defenseman in their first NHL game in Sens history. And not a whole lot of guys can say they start out paired with the number one defenseman on the team. And we had Thomas on about a month ago and he spoke about playing with you, playing with JBD and how he, it helps him too. Cause he's kind of going along, but what was that first experience? Like the rookie lap, take us through your whole experience of your first NHL game. Uh, that, that was a, well, the day wasn't crazy because I didn't know I could call up. We play in Montreal and then uh, before, uh, after the game, I get called up and they car service to Ottawa and they told me, yeah, you're not playing if something doesn't happen. So I was pretty confident. It's like, okay, it's nice to go watch the NHL game and see how the Saints doing. But then I got to the rink for the game just in case if something happens. And then it was probably like hour and a half before game. Somebody came to me and say, yeah, you need to play. Nice. We get positive case, so you have to play tonight. And then, honestly, I don't remember a lot after that. I was a little bit shocked. And <laughs> didn't expect that, so there's yeah. not much to tell about before game. Yeah, it's probably pretty <laughs> surreal getting to play in your first NHL game. And Ross mentioned that you got to play in that building without fans, but this year you got to play in the building with fans. What was it like, uh, the, the atmosphere of your uh, NHL games here at the Canadian Tire Center? It was great, like warm up and everything was great. But when you're playing hockey and you are in the game, you are not, you are not watching the fans or yeah. feeling that. It's a just weird thing, but I feel when I'm playing, I don't, I don't see the fans or anything. So that's, that's the thing. No, no doubt. It just means you're focused, man. And, and in a defense been playing the amount of minutes you have, like, I'm just looking here at your NHL game. Log. Like there's a few games where you're, you're probably just sitting on the bench a little more than you'd be used to, but you also DJ Smith trusts in you, man, 23 minutes more than a couple times on here. Like what, what does it mean to you? And what have you learned from not only DJ Smith, but also Troy, man, those are two guys who I think have been probably pretty influential for you. Yeah, of course, it's nice to see, like, the coach trust me, and I kind of get a little bit lucky on the first game. Like, we get a couple injuries. We didn't have that many demons. But, of course, they trust me, like, every situation. I, I play PK, and even I play PP. So, I, I think that was great experience for me, and the coaches gave me the chance. 
So when when we okay, let's let's get to Belleville because I I need to get into this season. This group of guys you told me they're special. You guys are are making a push. I feel like that's kind of a Troy man team. A Pilsy the last few years like they always finish really strong. Obviously you're well coached down there, but what's the vibe? You guys feel like you can win it all this season or what? Yeah, of course. I think we get the group who is believing us, and like last last threats when we make the playoffs. I think we feel out the, our game and we get better every day. Every every game we play better and we got a lot of like good winning streaks. So I think we we're gonna have good stretch here. For sure. I want to ask you about one of your teammates, the one you probably know the best, or at least for the longest, in Roby. Like he's a young kid. He's still, I believe, one of the youngest kids in the entire league. What's it like watching him develop from when you initially met him during Eels or even before to what he's become now? Well, yeah, that's a, he's a young guy still. Like you try to remember every day, he's just 19. Like how many guys in the AHL there is 19 or years old, like not many. So it's nice to see how he learned and how he learned to play hockey here. It's totally different and you need to a little bit, play different here than in back home so it's nice to see how he's doing right now and I'm pretty happy for him and it's nice to have him here so I guess somebody some days like just nice to talk Finnish and know thing about hockey yeah because it's good for me and I will say it's good for him, him too and how, what's it been like? I mentioned Victor Lodine off the top, another guy who I'm sure is leaning on you because, uh, I mean, I'm looking right now. I feel like, like Pontus Aberg was there at the start, but he's gone. So it's just you two fins. Have you been kind of helping him get to know the city? I'm, I'm sure it's gonna, uh, easier for him to lean on you guys as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, if you get the time, we'll, uh, we will ask him, like, do the stuff. And But honestly, in here in Belleville, there's not much to show. <laughs> so, and the last last couple of weeks when he when he has been here has been pretty busy for us. We play four and four both weeks, so it's good. Has been pretty busy for everybody. So, yeah, and I'm I'm looking at uh, your elite prospects page here, Lassie, and you unfortunately haven't had a lot of chances to go to the playoffs, and I mean COVID seasons do that as well what are you anticipating is going to be the biggest change from regular season hockey to the playoff hockey experience yeah of course like i i have been laughing with a couple of guys like i never been playing playoffs maybe yeah. when i was 14 15 i play a couple of games but i don't have that experience yet so it's i think it's great for me and see see how i play in the playoffs and it's it's probably going to be totally different hockey. Like everybody's playing. If you lose one game, you can be out. So I'm pretty excited for that. Oh, we're excited as well. You got one more regular season game and then on to the playoffs for the Belleville Senators. Um, with the crowd in Belleville, I mean, you guys are starting to pick it up a little bit more in terms of attendance, which is great to see. This might be the dumbest question I ever asked, but would you rather? Have the play-in series where you get home ice or avoid the best two out of three but have to start on the road? Uh, that's, a, that's a tough one. Uh, I maybe rather play that three and three. Okay. Because then, yeah, of course, you get a little break, but I honestly, I hate the break. Yeah. I, I want to get playing right away. We had, we had our break right now, so – Let's start doing playing playoff right away and try to win all the games. And I love that. Hey, Pilsy, no rest. Just get out there, play playoff hockey. Yeah. Let's go. I love oh, yeah. That. That's some confidence. You're ready to go. And I love to hear that. And the final question for me here, Lassie, and we appreciate your time. It's uh, It's been a blast getting the chat for you. For people that maybe um, haven't been to, to Finland, I, I definitely want to go one day. What are some of the highlights of, uh, of your home country? And do you go back there in the off seasons? Yeah, of course. I, I'm going to go back there and spend probably all my summer there. Nice. And, well, it's a tough question because I haven't been there 
a year. So it's going to change a lot. I remember last year after when I get home, like there was a lot of new things and a lot of going on and right. they built a new rink. So I, that's a probably one must to go right away when I get back home to see the rink. But there's a lot to see. You, if you want to go there, you definitely have to go in Tampere. Okay. It's a yep. great city. Your hometown. Yeah. Got to respect yeah. it. So did you grow up really close to where, where you played with Eels? Uh, yeah. Uh, my parents, they kind of live like different side the the uh, city, but it's not that far away. It's probably like 50, 50 minutes drive. So I have been spending a lot of time at the ring and what's, watching the illness playing when I grew up. So amazing. So that was probably a pretty cool experience. Your first time getting to play there in, in Liga, right? Yeah, that was a one point two. why I, I went there and play for the team when I was watching when I grew up. So it's for sake. That's and awesome. I feel like every, every young player want to play hometown team at some point. So absolutely i'm still waiting for the call from the sense but I'll, I'll wait my turn for <laughs> sure uh last question for me and of course you have playoffs to get through a calder cup to win but going into the off season especially from the sample size your games at the national hockey league le level all 16 of them what are you going to take from that and try to build on coming into training camp next year uh yeah uh that's hard to change right now i want to focus for the playoffs but for sure i feel i feel like First thing I need to talk to coaches here, what they see, what I have to do this summer to get better and be better at the training camp and try to make it for the team at the training camp. So, yeah, I, I feel like I need to work pretty much everything. But my defense game, it's the big part to make in the NHL at some point and stay there because I feel like if you make the NHL, you want to stay there. You don't want to play a couple games and go back. Everybody want to stay there. So, 100%. Well, you've got some business to take care of before then. We're going to be cheering you on with the Belleville Sens. One more regular season game, and then it's on to the playoffs where Lassie says, bring it on. No break. But we appreciate you taking a break <laughs> to join us today, man. Really appreciate it, and we'll do it again down the road. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Stick taps to Lassie for joining us. Great conversation with him. You can tell he's still getting used to the media game and being in, in Canada. I'd love to sit down with him eye to eye. I feel like that would go even better. But talk about his season going well. After maybe struggling offensively, where he was drafted as an offensive defenseman. Big time. He then went back to Finland, talked about his struggles where they knew he wasn't going to be there after COVID stop. So they wanted to give guys, and you understand that from the team's perspective yeah. as well, but he's really rounded out his game. I can't wait to see what happens with him next season. Yeah, he really has. And I, I think I'm glad he went over that because I think a lot of time fans look at prospects in the SHL, in Liga, and they're like, our first round guy is playing on the fourth line. He's getting like nine minutes. Well, those those leagues and teams over there, they don't give a crap about the um, no the NHL prospects and their their draft development, right? They're they're focused on the guys that are there now. So you got to take it with a grain of salt, knowing that that's the way things go. And uh, if you're looking at betting on those games, Ross, that's something you need to know. And if you're looking at betting any sports at all, you need to check out BetOnline.net. And we have breaking news for after the advertisement and a reason why I'm throwing money on the Sens tonight. Ooh, a little tease there. So if you're going to follow along with Ross, and hey, Ross has been hot lately. It's Stay it's hot. it's too bad you're not going to Philly for the game. Otherwise, it'd be a guaranteed <laughs> W. But if he was, you could go to betonline.net where all the greatest props, odds, parlays, whatever you like, money line, puck line, Anytime goal score, even you can bet on who's going to win the period if you're that confident in the, the way the momentum's going, and you can do it all at betonline.net. Check it out today. Look at your mobile device if you want a live bet at the game. But the one thing we can tell you is betonline.net is the trusted online sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. So, guys, check out betonline.net today where the game starts. All right, Pilsy, breaking news Ooh. from the Ottawa Senators. Slick Vic, Victor Lodine, has been called up 
to play in the season finale. Before we talk about how exciting that is, could they not have shown the fans a little appreciation and taken Scott Sabrin out of the lineup or Chris Tierney out of the lineup last night? I think they would have loved to have seen the kid who's got five goals and seven points in nine AHL games. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think I, I love the move of Scott Sabrin playing against Montreal. Yes. And obviously it paid off, but I would agree. It would have been great to get Lodine in for uh, Devils, Panthers, and Flyers to really see what he's got. Because we just talked about SHL guys. He had one hell of a season in the pro league over there. So he, he's comfortable and he's shown he can transition pretty damn easily to the North American game as he's been lighting it up with beauty goals over in Belleville, helping them clinch their playoff spot. So definitely that's uh, that's something to keep an eye on. And Ross, quickly while we're on Belleville, once again, when, when you cannot rely on a Toronto-based team to win a clutch game because they brought it to <laughs> overtime with Laval. So another three-point game, but Laval got the W here. So Laval now jumps ahead a couple spots. So it's looking like Lassie Thompson may get his wish and get that play in round ASAP. Can we talk for a moment how the Leafs players went to the Raptors game last night and they yeah. lost an elimination game? Like you can't, Weird. You can't draw that out. They were facing elimination for two games. This was their third straight game. Win, win. The Leafs show up, lose. And Ross, was that round one, the Ooh. round that those Leafs players Ooh. never really seemed to get out of there? Yes, it was round one. So they are just absolute mushes <laughs> in round one. They're a bigger mush than me. So yeah. that's that's saying something. So Pilsy's uh, parlay of the day coming back next week, by the it way. It is coming Playoffs, back, yes. Playoffs start Monday. So and we're Ross, all we'll, over that. We'll do some series uh, previews and we'll get 100%. fully into that because I'm fired up for these playoffs. So I don't love a lot of the first round matchups, but there are a handful of really juicy ones. 100%. We'll get the bandwagon calculator out. We'll get the Sens Abroad lineup out for you. Lots still to come. We love seeing how long we can stay in first overall among the Locked On shows through the playoffs when the Sens are on the links or on the beach. I'll be wearing my beach wear, though, as we uh, kind of take a, take a little lighter approach. Not that we're always so, uh, you know. We're pretty serious around here, Ross. We, are, we don't we're mess pro- around. Professional. We're professionals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Profe- hey, speaking of professionals, we got a topic to dive into. What are you expecting to see out of Victor Lodin in his NHL debut? A highlight real goal. Like, for, sh- <laughs> for shift. Yeah, like <laughs> he's not going to get a deflection or it's not going to be off a rebound. Like it's going to be a full on breakaway and he's going to do the Forsberg move or something. Like it's going to be absolutely spectacular. So I, I I mean, Ross, if if I can jump ahead here, he's going to be my locked on player because Ooh. he's just been so enticing to watch. And I, I really think we put out a poll, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago before Lodine came over, who's the most underrated Sens prospect. Yes. And if I remember correctly, it was low Dean by a mile, right? So now guys are now uh, fans are getting to really see him up close in North America, and it's very exciting. So I'm going to be locked on to Victor Low Dean, that's for sure. What what number is he wearing? Have they announced? No, not sure yet. Okay. If we'll I had to guess, he wore 91 in uh, in Sweden. That's skill guy number. Big time skill. Does he get the tinted visor there, like Angus Kirkshank uh, <laughs> said to us? Yeah, like the the full uh, Ovechkin in yeah. uh, in the Olympics, where it's like reflected. You, you're yeah. not even allowed that the NHL and That's like hilarious. neon laces on his skates. Uh, the whole deal. You're gonna notice him. Oh yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's not wearing his Belleville number, number seven. <laughs> I'll tell you that for free. Yeah, that's not uh, that one's hmm. taken. If I can taken. remember properly. Absolutely. But DJ Smith speaking to the media right now as we're recording, saying he will get PP two time. Which yeah. holy hell, anything to swap PP two. Will uh, will certainly go a long way for my enjoyment watching the games, and not only that, but he's going to be put in offensive situations. So why not put him on a line with Stutzla and Formanton? Why not just give it to us? This is a as meaningless of a hockey game as you will ever find at the NHL level. Yeah, I agree. Get him on that second line. I think he can do a lot with uh, Formanton and Stutzla because like where you're not going to put him with Waddy, Kelly, Kastelik, like. He's not going to mesh with those guys. So get him in the right spot. I think that makes sense. So as we pull up the Tankathon, can you see this, Pilsy? Oh, yeah. I see it. Okay, perfect. So Tankathon is up. And now that we got the screen sharing all all locked in, we'll be able to do this 
throughout. I might give it a little spin, you know, just to, just to play a little snack. But you look at it, Philadelphia, two wins in their last 10 games. Two and eight. Brutal. They're fourth right now in lottery odds. The Habs are first. Arizona second. Ottawa currently sitting in seventh. But Pilsy, a win tonight and a Detroit loss would move them back a spot. Oh. Is this the first time this season where you're cheering for a Sens loss? No, no, I'm okay. not doing it. I'm not doing it. Can't. Okay. And and all, I just want to say quickly, uh, our good friend at Central Healing, Graham, said at the game, some some clown threw a jersey on the ice. Ridiculous. That is such garbage. Disavow that that absolute loser. And yep. he, he should be banned from Sens games for life. I just wanted to get that in quickly because that that grinds my gears. Absolutely. All right. Let's give it one spin. Okay. Yep. All right. Seventh. Yeah. I really feel it's going to be seventh, Ross. I, I got a feeling in my bones. It's going to be seventh. Do you think the Sens have ever picked seventh before? I don't, I don't think so. Nothing's coming to mind. Somebody's smashing the steering wheel right now. hundred percent. I've got it right third, now. Fourth, Never. Fifth. Yeah. They pick thir- uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, ninth. Never pick seventh or eighth. Who's their second overall? Second? Jason yeah. Spezza, Alexi Ashen. Right. Yep. Both traded for each other. Yeah, that's that's very ironic there. Wow. Yeah. And then who are their two third overall picks? Uh, Timmy and... Ooh. I don't know the other third overall. Radic Bonk. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. There you go. So they would be drafting for the first time at seventh or eighth. Ninth, they've picked twice. I want to stay away from drafting ninth, Pills. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like it. You know who they've drafted before at nine? Lee, right? Brian Lee oh. and Jared Cowan. Oh, God. <laughs> so no defenseman at ninth. If you're going ninth, go for a forward or a goalie. Yes, please, 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 please. Or just trade the pick. <laughs> yeah. Just, hey, Campbell, we, we already gushed over him on yesterday's show. Um, all right, we didn't even bother doing the lines today. Got to say, I just want to see Victor Lodin, not to steal your lockdown player. I'll pick another one. I want to see Timmy get to 60 points. Let's have a three-point yes. night tonight, and let's at least get Brady to 30 goals. I'm cheering more for the milestones yeah. than the results. Like, what the else is there to cheer for? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that that's where I'm locked on. All right, nice. Are, are we going to do uh, – we don't have the Philly lines, but I, I, I've got a lookout player. Sure. Fire it up. My lookout player is going to be someone that uh, is is kind of uh, connected to the Sens in Bobby Brink because he was a guy yes. that a lot of people said, hey, you should have taken him over Shane Pinto. Didn't he go, if not the pick after, two picks because it was Kaliev and Brink right after, right? Fact. Yeah, so – he and he, even I was of the mind like, hey, Bobby Brink's sitting there. You better get him. And he's coming off a championship year in Denver, where let's just say he had a good year. Ross, fifty-seven points in forty-one games. Oh, Is damn. that good? I think so. Yep. And he's got nine NHL games, and he's already uh, contributing with four assists. So I'm going to be uh, looking out for Bobby Brink. He's very intriguing to me. Nice. My lookout player is going to be a player I actually watched at the Ralph this year, Pilsy. Noah Cates is okay. uh, is playing tonight as well for Philly. He was a uh, a member of the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. My poor girlfriend Rachel. She um I didn't have the heart to tell her that she was wearing maroon. Just like she that's just the this whatever she wanted to wear that night. And I was like, you know, it's that's the the opponent's color, right? She's like, okay, fine, I'll wear something else. She put on something yellow. I was like, that's that's their other color. <laughs> oh boy! But uh, no, all in good fun. We had a great time watching them. But this kid is he's sick. Like at the college level, he was noticeable every shift. He was the captain of uh, of Minnesota Duluth, and then he's got nine points in fifteen NHL games, and he was also an assistant captain at the Olympics for Team USA. So this kid's got a lot of experience for a young guy. Uh, late draft pick, fifth rounder in 2017. Okay, nice. And uh, yeah, he's an NCAA champion as well. Not from this year, but the Bulldogs were back-to-back champs a couple of years ago. So I'm going to be looking out for him. And he's playing on a line with Bobby Brink and Scott right. Lawton. Noted oh, Brady Kachuk hater, Scott yes. Lawton. So um, these two teams always have entertaining games. There's always tough guys on either end. I'm actually surprised Scott Sabrin's coming out of the lineup because they've got Zach McEwen. 
who's yep. always running around. He's fought Brady a couple times. He's always looking to get in the mix. Good PEI boy, Zach McEwen. But and when I say fight Brady, you might remember him. He played for uh, played for uh, Vancouver last year. So they faced Ottawa quite a bit. Uh, Nate Thompson sends abroad. Great to see him back in the lineup because he's obviously been dealing with a lot of injuries this year. So obviously we got to shout out our sends abroad, but their decor is absolutely brutal. They've been getting terrible goaltending. Thank you for Timmy Martin Jones, but Mm -hmm. this is just a very bad hockey team and their loss of Claude Giroux is so noticeable. Like it's just a bad team. So I feel like it's more about what Ottawa is going to do versus what you think Philly's going to do. Well, Andros, they've got some serious injury trouble too, right? Like Ryan Ellis was supposed to be a massive addition. He's been right. hurt all year. Sean Couturier, no dice. So I need I need to see some stats of the overall injury percentage in the league. Because every team that we see play, we know Ottawa's dealing with their own. It feels like injuries have to be up this year. Yeah, big time. Yeah, it, it's been wild this year. And not just like the amount of injuries, but the quality of players that have right. been out. It's crazy. And the term, like guys yes. are out like like months and, and months or years at a time. Years. I just want to see Shane Pinto. <laughs> I want to see Shane Pinto play a game. Damn it! Same, same. Also, Ross, did you see that picture of the guy at the game yesterday with a Pinto Senegal jersey? Dude, I pointed That's that out to you. Sick. I pointed that out to you at a game that we went to. Oh damn! Okay. And he it's signed, which is also cool. But oh, he was man. with somebody who was wearing a Connor Brown twenty eight Senegal black jersey. Nice. They're, That's so good. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm into it. Usually, usually I'm a bit of a hardo where it's like, oh, they didn't wear that jersey, but no, I think no, that's, super that's cool. fun. Yeah, yeah, super fun. Not quite Laleem mask though. You gotta love Marsh and having the little doesn't get jersey. better than that. Chef's kiss. We are gonna do a postcast tonight. As you can tell, my voice, I'm not 100 percent right now, but we will do a postcast. The final game of the year. It's we our flu game, Ross. It's our flu game. Yeah, hundred percent. We'll battle through it for sure. Here, what's your final prediction for tonight? Do you think they get the win to end off on a high note? I like. I have no clue what to Me predict either. because who knows what this Flyers lineup's going to be? Uh, if 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 Martin Jones is in, guaranteed dub. I mean, that's <laughs> that's easy enough to say. Uh, I'm going to go five three cents. All right, five three cents. I'm going to go six one for oh. either team. <laughs> Somebody's getting blown out here. The other team is going to be halfway on the plane to their vacation after the season. I don't know which one it's going to be, though, but we'll find out. And our vacation will not start because we are your home Monday through Friday right here on Locked On Senators for all things league-wide now, officially after tonight, but from a Senators perspective. And not only that, it better be a busy offseason for Pierre Dorian or else he might not be the GM by next Christmas, I'll say. Hot seat. For Pierre Dorian, if it's not a successful offseason. No Dell's autos, no Holdens. I need legitimate in their prime players who want to come to Ottawa. But we'll discuss that in depth coming up on the show. We hope you enjoyed our conversation with Lassie Thompson. We've got more interviews planned throughout the offseason. But for today, we say goodbye. We'll chat in the postcast. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your team every day.